Welcome to Brainstorm MTG. I'm ELD, and this is Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Ball Games in Bellingham, Mass. Here we have Nick on EDH versus Death and Taxes from Ethan. This uh, kind of survival of the fittest esque deck from Nick. Very unorthodox. I believe it has a bit of a following online. Uh, but I would be surprised if many people in the room would be able to give you a kind of good guess of the 75 in it. So far, a couple of Rashad imports here for Ethan. And able to get a Phyrexian Revoker and an Aether Vial down. So despite not having colored mana in his monocolored deck, so far, mounting a bit of a board presence. And this Aether Vial threatens to actually solve his mana problems and really accelerate his plan forward. A Green Sun Zenith for two, or sorry, for one, as the Noble Hierarch not going to be able to tap for mana. Green Sun Zenith does need to be shuffled back in. And Quirin Ranger. Not a huge amount of synergy right now, but uh, Noble Hierarch were to be free of this pesky Revoker will allow for some nice explosive plays on Nick's side of the board. Kasali Pride Mage would be my number one guess as far as things that would take out this Phyrexian Revoker. Rashad and Port tapping down. The Savannah. Windswept Heath. Going to be sacrificed. Getting a Tropical Island. All of these lands able to be returned via Quirin Ranger. So Man of Denial going to be a little bit tricky for Ethan. And an Aether Vial of his own, along with a Birds of Paradise. And again, swinging for one. This time, Tomic coming down. Tomic, a 2-3, destroying that Noble Hierarch. Four damage coming in. Nick not going to trade this Quirin. Ranger for the Revoker at this time. The Hierarch's already dead. Oh, and now Sword of Fire and Ice able to cast. We have a Horizon Canopy on his side of the board. This is prior. Oh, is this prior to Modern Horizons? This one's from August. I feel like Modern Horizons is already in the, the format at this point. Birds of Paradise, tapping, untapping, land being replayed. Queer and Ranger... Does not target the land. That is part of the payment. They might actually be discussing that right here, but yeah, it definitely does not target. I believe that cell phone emerging from the bottom of the screen, probably a judge call. But yeah, absolutely, Queer and Ranger does not target the land to untap. It does target the Birds of Paradise. And now a true name nemesis, so really doing some heavy-duty lifting is the Birds of Paradise. And a Sylvan Library added into the mix, and another Aether Vial. 14 life to play with here. And now a Recruiter of the Guard off of Vile, and this can mean all sorts of bad things. Flicker Wisp coming down. Sword of Fire and Ice. Able to give Pro Blue. Can Nick out race here? There's a lot to ask. Suiting up Tomic. So he swings. Nick could potentially untap and block.
and he does not. He's going to take the damage. Ethan's going to get a card and shock the bird. Swords to Plowshares now, taking out this Queer and Ranger, and things looking very grim here for Nick. Death and Taxes absolutely swarming here, creating some inevitability with the Sword of Fire and Ice. I think we may see Flicker Wisp getting this Revoker out of there and then resetting the Revoker on Aether Vial. Nick does have two of them, and Ethan has all the tools he needs to win this game already on board. Sword of Fire and Ice on a flyer means two more swings. He just needs to contain the situation. That Sword of Fire and Ice representing a ton of extra damage. True name nemesis may not be a match here with these life totals as high as they are. Flicker Wisp revealing a uh, removing re recruiter of the guard and able to get another Flicker Wisp. So the team just being assembled. Ethan going for the longer, grindier version or line, I should say, just getting his maximum card advantage in. And swinging out with everything. And we've got an activation of Aether Vial. Scrub Sprites. Flicker Wisp coming in. Targeting the Scrub Ranger. Or sorry, Scrub Ranger. Uh, and then exiling it. Now True Name is untapped. Is going to be able to make a block. But it's still a ton of damage. Down to just one. Yeah, it's like eight damage coming in. So many flyers here. Nick needs so much help. I mean, a sweeper for starters. Rashad and Port tapping down that Savannah. Aether Vials ticking up. And that is it for the game. Ethan taking down game number one. This is part of our ELDC, ELD Legacy Open. You actually see the play mat on the left-hand side there. The champion going to get that mat along with a spot on our Wall of Legends. A permanent part of the store's decor immortalizing their victory over uh, what is always a very tough field. We have a, a great amount of support here from the Legacy players. Uh, our weeklies, uh, we usually are somewhere in between like 12, 14 on the, the low side, mid-20s on the really big weeks. I've been very happy with that. If uh, you're ever interested in playing Legacy uh, with us, I absolutely recommend that you come on down, even if you don't have a deck. There are many people that can actually let you borrow decks so you can experience just how awesome Legacy is and you know start working towards becoming a Legacy player. I think that's really where all roads lead as far as, uh, as, far as I can tell with Magic of these Eternal formats where you're not constantly trying to keep up with rotation and you know trying to keep up with standard. It's... Uh, it's kind of funny to think about how expensive Standard is as a Legacy player. Once you are invested in the format, when new sets come out, it is really not that big a deal to try and make adjustments. And we see here a deck like Nyx, this, uh, this crazy brew that he has going can easily take uh, a new printing or two and incorporate it. He's got Fauna Shaman in there, allowing him to tutor up creatures. It is a type of format where you 
can actually be successful uh, with your own builds. It doesn't just have to be kind of stock net decks. Uh, even, even decks that are unorthodox because of the power level of the cards uh, in this format. I mean, I mean, think about like Academy Rector. That card's like not even played, and it is bonkers. That card is amazing. You can just like have a potentially a turn one omniscience, and it's not really played, which is really remarkable. Ethan on death and taxes. Talk about decks that would be difficult for people to comprehend. If you explain to someone, we've got this format that starts at the very beginning of the game. All but the absolute most powerful cards are legal. Just a handful of banned cards. And you would not imagine that death and taxes would be a deck that fits that format. But it absolutely is a perennial player. And often doing quite well versus the most broken decks in the format. Here we have a Swords to Plowshares, Constraining Nyx Mana. A solid turn one play here for Ethan. The deck has a lot of good turn two plays. Though Thalia may not be as good versus Nick as it is versus most of the field. The majority of his cards here are creatures. And now a Green Sun Zenith. Grabbing Dryad Arbor. So a little bit of mana acceleration here. It's a lopsided at the moment. Four mana for Nick, just one for Ethan. Let's see what he does to kind of restrain the mana. He does fire a Wasteland off. Does he have a Swords as well? This Noble Hierarch. Any path to exiles? That looks like a path to exile, but uh, Nick not searching for a land there. Pithing Needle now. Gonna stop Queeran Ranger. This match was back in August. I think there was actually a rules update this year at some point uh, where you have to inform your opponent about the search. I, we did not see a search off of that path to exile. So Nick essentially down a mana from where he should be. Fetching again. And a three-mana play. It's going to be Leovold. Much better versus the majority of the field. It does stop this Rashadden port from being an effective or reasonable thing. And Stoneforge Mystic grabbing Batterskull. Batterskull, a really brutal card here. Umazawa's Jite and Sword of Fire and Ice would at least allow Nick to be drawing some cards thanks to Leovold. But Batterskull just going to be pretty blunt. Palace Jailer getting rid of Leovold. Interesting. Becoming the Monarch. Can Nick find a way to actually deal some combat damage here? Fauna Shaman. Boy, I feel like if Nick actually becomes the Monarch this game, that could give him a way back in. Queeran Ranger and Dryad Arbor can hold off this Batter Skull for quite some time, blocking and then returning, preventing any combat damage. Now four more mana for a Walking Ballista at two. Oh, man. That is rough. And actually takes out the Fauna Shaman. Wasteland taking out a land. Nick not returning the land there. I, I believe that may 
Oh, the Queer and Ranger must be stopped by the Pithing Needle. So forget that whole line as described. Kasali Pride Mage now can make that line relevant. Or it can get rid of the Batter Skull potentially. Now if Ethan gets to his fifth land, he will be able to return the Batter Skull in response to the Pride Mage being sacrificed. What an interesting game this has turned out to be. Ethan with a couple of creatures on board. He's the Monarch. Three mana. Now just casting Recruiter of the Guard. Another body. I mean, Nick could definitely become the Monarch here. Recruiter of the Guard grabbing Phyrexian Revoker. Revoker coming down and putting an end to a great deal of plans. Pithing Needle taken out by the Kosali Pride Mage. I believe that's naming mom. We will see how this plays out. Sylvan Library. And now Nick Hellbent. Not going to be able to stop this Batter Skull from really causing some havoc. Leon and Relic Warden. Wow, Ethan with all of the answers here. Two damage from the Palace Jailer. Nick just taking it. And this is getting very grim. I don't know what type of comeback potential he's going to have from here. His mana base being attacked. A serious offense growing from Ethan. And that Batter Skull still just chilling in hand. Has not determined that that's the best use of his mana yet. And Nick also not sandbagging cards in hand. Doesn't have Brainstorm perhaps in this build. I don't believe he does. Uh, so those extra lands may not be of huge value. Palace Jailer continues to swing against a practically defenseless Nick. Wasteland now taking out one of these duels. Ethan, considering his options, looks like a couple of savannas and a bayou. I guess not using the, the wasteland there. Considered it and then did not use it. We've got a Rashad and Port. So with three ports, this mana base... And very, very disruptible. This batter skull still not present. I gotta say, I actually think it'd probably be correct to get it into play sooner than later. A true name nemesis could kind of create some problems here. I mean, true name could really slow things down quite a bit. So, return a land, replay at Green Sun Zenith now. And that Leovold is exiled as long as Ethan is the monarch. Only way he's going to be getting that back is if Nick manages to get in some damage. And I believe that Mother of Runes being shut off by the Phyrexian Revoker. 
a night of autumn being considered? No exalted creatures. Looks like he paused on Birds of Paradise, perhaps because of the evasion, but yet yeah, doesn't actually have the capacity to deal any damage without an exalted creature. And here we go. There is... It's like Marin, I think it is. It's a commander card, and that's going to be recurring creatures from the graveyard. It also gets counters on it. I think every time one of your creatures dies, and then instead of returning them to hand, it starts returning them to the battlefield. So, Nick, hanging in there. Ethan's not really doing anything too busted. Birds of Paradise coming back. Yeah, at the beginning of your end step, choose a creature in your graveyard. And then whenever another creature you control dies, you get an experience counter. So Nick potentially going to be gaining experience. And recurring Kasali Pride Mage would be amazing if he could pull his way back into this game. That would just be tremendous. The beginning of each end step, he's going to get a creature back from the graveyard. We've got Fauna Shaman. And now Batter Skull coming down. But not going to be the easiest way to push through damage with all of these kind of disposable creatures. They're potentially just going to grow Nick's experience. This Marin of the Clan, Naltoth. Bringing back a Kasali Pride Mage every turn would mop this up pretty quick. Got the... Frixian Revoker, it can straight up kill. The Batter Skull is a little tricky to kill. We've got a block and a return with the Kasali or with the Queer and Ranger. So no life being gained. And that pair of wastelands being fired off. All four Rashad and ports here for Ethan. Versus Nick's three lands. He does have the Dryad Arbor in hand. Go into the upkeep. This Dryad Arbor can be discarded to the Fauna Shaman. If he's not interested in playing those games any further. Let's see what he does with it. Fauna Shaman being used... This is going to be crazy if Nick finds a way to win this. Fauna Shaman can discard a card to go, discard a creature card to go get any creature in his deck. Oddly enough, he, he actually does need some creatures to die to fully take advantage of this Marin. If he can avoid Ethan drawing a Swords to Plowshares. Or just get rid of that Revoker and turn that Mother of Runes back on. This could be incredible. Looks like he was considering using Fauna Shaman. He is just going to play a Dryad Arbor. And during the end step, he returns 
a creature to his hand. This game going a considerable distance here. Aether Vial continues to just add to Ethan's board. And playing it real slow, taps down the Queer and Dryad. Oh, the, sorry, the uh, Future Side Dryad Arbor. A fetch. Nick not just going to roll over here. I mean, this has been a terrible spot for him the entire game. It's game number two, and he fetches, finds no land, and that, that has got to be psychologically tough. Sacking that land for no reason, just getting a shuffle. Got to feel pretty bad. So no more plains or forests left in the deck. These Rashad and Porch's just went way up in stock. Containment Priest being discarded. Does he have anything spicy in here that he can actually get onto the battlefield? Just a Birds of Paradise with the green mana. Going to be casting this bird? Or is it still staying in hand? Now, Marin has a counter on it, so Dryad Arbor or Birds of Paradise will come back to the battlefield and send it to the hand. Caracas now bouncing Marin, and I gotta feel like that is gonna be pretty much a wrap. Marin was the way out for Nick here if he could generate enough advantage, but Caracas is not only gonna handle him. Uh, this time, but any future attempts to get the legend down are going to prove to be futile. Umazawa's Jite goes on the souped up batter skull. It swings, it connects, it gets two counters, and that is just about it. We start to see everything fall apart so quickly. Nick admirably hanging in there. And eventually Ethan just finding an answer to that Marin and able to cut through with Batter Skull and Umazawa's Jite versus a creature deck, uh, which is not exactly shocking. That combination has taken down many creature decks in the past. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.